The research article of discussion is called Possible Electromagnetic Effects on Abnormal Animal Behavior Before an Earthquake. It was written by Hayakawa, published in 2013 in the journal Animal. In this research article, we will discuss first unusual animal behavior in terms of the magnitude of an earthquake, the onset time of the animal behavior in relationship to the earthquake, and the distance of the animal behavior in relation to the epicenter. In the first part of the discussion, animal behavior will be discussed on those terms. And then this is followed by a discussion of electromagnetic emissions before earthquakes. This will be described in the same way that the animal behavior was described in terms of the delay time and the distance from the epicenter and the magnitude of the earthquake. And then a comparison of animal behavior on this front and the specific electromagnetic effects will be discussed. And this will bring on the overall conclusions of the research study. Figures 1 through 4 are all adapted from Rikitake 1998 with permission of the publisher, and figure 5 and 6 are both adapted from Hada et al. in 2006 with permission from the publisher. In figure 1, we see the dependence of unusual animal behavior on earthquake magnitude and the epicenter distance meaning the distance from the epicenter that the event occurred. Both of these are logarithmic in scale. Magnitude goes up exponentially. As you go up the scale, you get larger and larger increments in terms of the power. And they've plotted the kilometers in that fashion. If you look on the left, you see a 1. About halfway down, you see a 50. And then the next half, or at the very end, you see a thousand. So you can see it's not going up linearly. The circles here represent unusual animal behavior before an earthquake. And they're plotted by magnitude of the earthquake and the distance of the actual animal behavior from the epicenter. And what you can see here is that as the magnitude of the earthquake increases, so does the distance of the unusual animal behavior on average. In figure two, we see the relationship between the magnitude of an earthquake and the log time, which represents the log of the time delay from when the unusual animal behavior occurred to the actual time of the earthquake. And note that this log time represents from just a few minutes to hundreds of days. Again, this is similar to the last figure in that the circles represent the instances of unusual animal behavior. When we look at this figure, we can see that there is no clear relationship between the magnitude of the earthquake and the time that the actual unusual animal behavior took place. In figure three, we can see the occurrence frequency of unusual animal behavior across the different time delays of unusual animal behavior. So what we see here on the left side, we see the time again in the log scale, and we see the frequency of events that occurred across these times. And what we see is that the greatest number occurs in a period of about 1 to 10 days, the greatest density of events. And given that this is a logarithmic scale, meaning that as the time gets larger and larger, away from the actual earthquake, 
the amount of time within those periods gets increasingly larger. Therefore, when we see the greatest chunk of events occurring in that initial time frame, it's even more indicative of a very dense period of unusual animal behavior. To review what we found so far in the last three figures, what we found is that as the earthquake magnitude increases, the average distance of unusual animal behavior from the epicenter also increases. We also found there is no clear relation between the earthquake magnitude and unusual animal behavior onset time. Finally, we found that the greatest frequency and density of unusual animal behavior events occurs between one to 10 days before the earthquake. All of what we just learned is important to keep in mind because we are gonna look at some data of electromagnetic effects that occur before earthquakes right now. And this is going to be compared to how animals behaved before earthquakes to note similarities in the onset time and the distance in which this occurs. And this is to best figure out which specific precursor is most likely to be responsible for animal behavior. Now, these are a list here of possible mechanisms, and there are more that could create unusual animal behavior. And Rikatek concluded that the most likely effect was electromagnetic effects. And he did note that other effects such as acoustic signals and vibrations due to micro cracks and the emanation of gases and chemical substances are also things that should not be ruled out. So while there are other possibilities, right now we're going to focus specifically on electromagnetic effects. Just as a brief overview, I'm going to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a figure from Wikipedia. We are going to focus on the radio frequency area, which is all the way on the right. And notice that the wavelength gets longer and longer as you move to the right. And what we see here is the type of frequency, the class specifically, and the actual frequency, the wavelength, and the energy associated with it. But I just want to point out that we are going to be looking at the bottom of the spectrum here. To simplify things, I'm going to start at the very high frequency and the high frequency. And I'm just going to discuss it briefly because we don't have a figure. And then I'll move on to the ultra low frequency and then the extremely low frequency. And there are some bits of data that don't have associated figures. So I'll just add them there. And then we will look at all of the spectrums together and see how they compare. And then we will compare it to the animal data. As I said, I'm going to start with the high frequency, very high frequency radio emissions, the ultra low frequencies, and then the extremely low frequencies, which is the lowest. And Emoto et al. in 1999 presented a statistical study on these radio emissions associated with earthquakes. And this was based on observations over Tsukuba, Japan, over about a few years, and learned the following that high frequency or very high frequency radio emissions appeared within three to four days before an earthquake, and there was an abrupt increase within one day before the earthquake, that the distance was found to be several tens of kilometers from the observatory. So basically, they tend to be very highly localized. And this is relative to the other frequencies, but also just in general. This is not extremely far-reaching effect. Also note that we don't have any data on the earthquake magnitude and detection distance relationship. In figure four, we can take a look at ultra-low frequency radio emissions as a function of 
the magnitude of the earthquake and the distance that it was from the epicenter. What we see here is a general increase in distance of the anomaly with increasing magnitude of the earthquake. Specifically in terms of the distance and the magnitude, according to these data, the maximum detection distance is about 100 kilometers for a magnitude 7, and it's about 70 to 80 for a magnitude 6. Some additional important points to note is that there does not seem to be a relationship between the onset of this ULF and the magnitude of the earthquake. And what generally happens in terms of the time is that they see the first enhancements about one to two weeks before the earthquake, and it lasts for about a week, but at least a few days. And then it seems to quiet down a little bit for a few days comparatively. And then there's a large increase just before the earthquake, perhaps a couple of days. Then we see the most abrupt increase right before the earthquake. So to summarize, what we have here is an increase in the distance of the effect with magnitude, but no effect of the onset of the anomaly in relationship to the magnitude. But there is an effect of time, as we just reviewed, where it follows the onset of about two weeks for a little while decreases and then increases again a couple of days before with the abrupt onset, a few hours before the earthquake. In figure five and six, we're going to look at extremely low frequency. And what we see here in figure five is the occurrence histogram, the frequency histogram of ELF, extremely low frequency emissions, we see that we have a similar distribution of onset time as we have seen in the past, where about two weeks before we start seeing an increase, about 10 days to a week before we see a peak of this anomaly, and then we see a decrease in the anomaly slightly, followed by an increase again the day before and an abrupt increase just before the earthquake. In figure six, we can see the extremely low frequency in relation to the magnitude of the earthquake and the distance from the epicenter. Again, as we saw with ULF, there's an increase of distance from the epicenter with increased magnitude. However, the detection distance is much larger for ELF than ULF due to the better propagation properties that are specific to ELF. As a whole, what we see is that there is a peak in the occurrence of extremely low frequency that occurs seven to ten days before the earthquake. It declines slightly and rises right before the earthquake. And we see that as the magnitude of the earthquake gets larger, the distance of the effect gets greater. But there's no onset magnitude relationship in terms of the onset time of the anomaly the magnitude of the earthquake. That tends to be consistent across magnitude. If we look at all the electromagnetic frequencies that we just examined together, which includes the high frequency and very high frequency, the ultra low frequency, and the extremely low frequency, we see in terms of onset time that the ULF and ELF tend to onset at the same time and follow the same pattern. About seven to ten days get slightly smaller and then onset again abruptly right before the earthquake. We also see 
that the very high frequency and high frequency tend to onset about three to four days before. In terms of the distance, the high frequencies are the most localized, followed by the ultra low frequency, followed by the ELF, extremely low frequency. In terms of their relationship to magnitude, we don't know anything about the magnitude to distance relationship to the high frequencies, but we do know that as the magnitude gets greater, the distance gets greater for both the ULF and the ELF. So now that we know this, it's time to compare these results to the unusual animal behavior. We don't have the specificities on exactly when the animal abnormalities peak in terms of the 10 days before the earthquake. But we do know that this is when the behavior peaks, which is comparable to the electromagnetic anomalies of ultra low frequency and very low frequency. They tend to have their onset about seven to 10 days before, which seems to be in line with the animal abnormalities. We also see that there is a relationship between the magnitude of the earthquake and the distance in which these abnormal behaviors occur. As the magnitude of the earthquake increases, so does the distance of the anomaly. So it looks like ultra low frequency is a good fit as well as extremely low frequency. However, high frequency does not tend to fit the animal behavior pattern quite as well. So that is excluded as the main possibility in terms of what is causing the unusual animal behavior. And note that this is all in line with research showing effects such as these frequencies being emitted from rocks stressed under pressure in laboratory, extremely low frequencies and ultra low frequencies. This is also in line with laboratory experiments showing animals responding in unusual ways to ultra low frequencies and extremely low frequencies. So these conclusions are empirically supported in the laboratory as well. Our conclusion here then, it's likely that ultra low frequency and extremely low frequency are responsible for unusual animal behavior before an earthquake because they have similar properties. And it's important, however, to investigate this further and to keep in mind that this may be the case primarily, for example, for certain types of animals. And there could be multiple factors that are contributing to unusual animal behavior. So these are great advances in our understanding of what is causing anomalies in animals before earthquakes.